The one talking is Arbat Guachimari. I'm right now at uh, Sina campus in Dimpiji. Originally, I'm, I'm born from uh, southwestern part of the country, where at least is most of the coldest area we have in this uh, in this country. But it is beautiful. We don't have uh, malaria there. We are immune from malaria because mosquitoes cannot survive. Uh, for for me, when we when I was growing up, everything was well. We are in a country where most of the time it has been peaceful since I was born. And uh, we have not, I, I personally have not experienced bad or serious challenges as my colleagues, as my colleague has said. And my education career was powerful. I did not know at one moment in my education career, I would drop out of school because my dad was well, my mom was well, everything seemed to be all right. Until when I reached university, pursuing the career in uh, medicine. And my, my dad, his business couldn't manage supporting me continue with my career. And uh, I dropped out of the campus for actually a semester, which is six months. During that time, I was pondering about what could be next. My dream was shut down of being uh, a medical personnel. But during the course, I had uh, gotten a friend who lived in, uh, who was on internship here in Uganda. He had become my friend. Then I told him of my ordeal, how things have turned upside down. Couldn't continue with my career in education. Then he volunteered to talk with the parents who are the Americans, by the, who are the Americans. And I was lucky that uh, after a month of struggling, looking for where I needed to start. My word was basically ending in terms of pursuing education career. He, they are, my friend's family volunteered to pay my school fees for the remaining semesters to finish up my career. That was like the rebirth of me going back to the university to continue with my education. She, the family, paid my tuition with no conditions attached. They just told me, go back at school, make a budget, go back at school. You do not need to pay us back. You just ensure that you finish up what you started. That was, I think, the most ever gift I've ever received in my life. Because it gave me hope again. It get me back on my track. And I was happy that... Uh, I completed my education university around 20, 2010 and I got employed. But it, it was a debt for me to think, how will I ever pay back this family, which is based in America, me and Uganda. The money they spent on me, I couldn't make them say I would be paid back. It's something that what stuck on my mind for the years I was practicing medicine. Until around 2016, when my friend who had joined Sina gave me a call telling me about how there is a project which is medical related that had started at Sina and is supporting the youth to guard against HIV by then, which was a scourge. And with my experiences in reproductive health, I said, I think it's time for me to go and give back. I came to Sina, I, I talked with the gentleman and I asked, is there a hospital where I'm going to be working? Is there, it was, it was a little bit challenging for me to believe I'm, I was going to work in a space where there is no medical facility. Reaching there, the first, we were used to ordinary interviews where you go with all your certificates being covered with you in your bag, you present and you want to face the panel. It was a different. The panel I faced, nobody asked me which level of education I have reached. The only thing they told me was like, this is the project you're going to be working on and it is going to be online. 
I never, I had not owned a phone by then, a smartphone. I had a conventional phone. Everything was new to me. I was so naive about computers. But uh, the environment, I got so curious, curious about the environment I found. Everything looked completely different from the world where I was coming from. It was a little bit intimidating, but it was also a little bit of um, saying, I think this is a new world that possibly is going to change you because this is the world we live in. I started working, looking at how others were now doing their work. Slowly, slowly, I started figuring out how the computer was operating. Everything was completely different for me. It was from uh, our education, from uh, the college, somebody who was uh, proud of the medical background. I was really challenged. I met stories, people from the refugee. It was my first time to interact with refugees, different stories, people who were so much vulnerable, and everything was really so challenging to me. At the later stage, I realized that I think the community I'm coming to is the one which is going to change me, how I view the world. I started humbling myself. I left completely uh, practicing medical. Then I joined the project. We started working. I was residing at Sina until the time when it reached. The project graduated from Sina. We went to Kampala. And much of the time, I was on the call trying to talk to the youth about sexuality. And the most compelling thing that came into my mind was each to do with, everybody at least would be complaining about each to do with money. Poverty, money, poverty, money. I think my relationship is not working because of money. I think my boyfriend has left me because of money. I think uh, our men are taking advantage of me because of money, because I need money. So everything was rotating about money. And it was a result of, a result of poverty. So... As we progress with the project, I developed so much courage because talking with the people, I learned that they they were really challenging me. That's the time Etienne connected us to connected me to Etienne encouraged me to take up coaching because at least on a daily basis I would talk with maybe sixty calls, more than sixty calls or a hundred calls, different scenarios. Then I got an opportunity to go for education back up to medical school, I declined it. Then Etienne said there is an opportunity that is coming up to do with coaching from Ericsson International, based in Canada. And I think it took me by surprise to say, that is, I think, what I need because people need others who can deliver hope, who can show there is hope. The world is not ending with the problems you are facing. I enrolled with that, and uh, it's when I started transiting, I left the project. I had overgrown the project. I left the space for others to continue running the project. I came back officially to Sina. I did not care about how much they were paying me. I cared how much impact Sina was giving to the most vulnerable people. And with my experience now, I started the coaching program at Sina as the first pioneer. And I started coaching others who I found at Sina to be coaches. Until the right time, until the time reached when I felt I was not planning to leave. I actually left Sina to go back to my area because of COVID. Because COVID got me outside the Sina. And my effort towards Sina started diminishing. And that's when I started. The, that's when the I that's when the birth of the Dunu Fund started because everybody during COVID things were not working financially, everybody was completely down. Children were would go to school, would the schools would close, parents lost uh, lost hope in terms of finance. Everybody was struggling. Then we created what we call Nunu Fund. And Nunu Fund 
was basically there to now instill hope in the people to do with finance. When we started Nunu Fund, the, a, the goal was to ensure that we encourage more parents to save money to send their children to school. Here in Uganda, our education system, it is technically it needs to technically it is free, but on the ground parents are paying money. And with the poverty levels we are having in this country, with the statistics we are having, at least in every seven years, in every seven years, children who drop out of school across 1.3 million children. On a daily basis, on a daily basis, every day, every day by 24 hours, 400 children drop out of school. This is the elementary school, the primary level. Here in our education, it is a family basis. So in a year we have three terms. And the parent and a parent who is struggling much to send a child to school is the one who is practicing subsistence farming. So when the when we quoted non fund project, we are looking at how we can leverage on the, the resources we have as a country or as a, as communities trying to figure out how do we take advantage of what we are having to raise money to send so many children to so so school. So we created a project that runs two, pro two projects at, at once. One project is targeting agriculture side arm and another project, another program is targeting the business community. This is what is supporting us with some money to support the the children we are supporting now. In agriculture, we are supporting households to sell their produce at a higher price. And this is where we raise money. So we are eliminating the middlemen on, on in between who take advantage of a parent taking a child to school. They, they give them little money in, against what they have produced. As coming on board, we give them a higher price because we, we, we collect these beans from them, we store them, and then when prices when prices stabilizes, we sell at a higher price. As, as a project, we share the, prof, the proceedings, the profit out of the beans we have made. And then on the business arm, on the shops, the businesses, we also know in our communities, people do small, small purchases from the shops. And therefore we bring the shops onto our system. And when these people go to do shopping, they are always given discount. I think in your country, you call it a royalty program. When you are a customer so much to a business, when you go to purchase, they always give you in terms of cents. Here we call it shillings, but here there I know you, they call it cents. So it's 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 what we pull and we pull into our non fund. And when the pool becomes huge, we are able to pay school fees. We don't put interest on our money because the people themselves are putting money. We keep working hard to ensure that we make many businesses on our side to ensure that we receive more money to pay the school fees. So we have we, in the communities where we are working now, we are able to improve savings. We are making a business. We the the produce that these households are producing are producing it is now very variable. It's it's of high value, which gives us the edge to set, to create more money to make more money. Currently, we are supporting uh, two thousand two hundred households. And in schools, we are supporting 1,200 children from nursery to university. And we are able to give them scholastic materials in some areas where children are, able, are unable to access food, we are able to provide food. So we are ensuring that once a child is within our project, we ensure that at least they can be retained in school until they finish a certain cycle of education. In, in the future, we foresee to say, given the funds, a very bit of funds, we look forward to create uh, to create a warehouse, which can guarantee us 
to create, to, to store a lot of beans in terms of tannins, so that every household which have beasts can automatically bring their beans to us and we store. Now we start looking for market, we start looking how we can add value. The idea is to, to, to leverage on that and we raise, uh, we make a lot of money to support as many children as possible. And also we are looking at creating what we technology wise to create buy now, save now, where you go to buy and you are given a discount there and then when you save this money, then at a, at a later stage, when the, 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 when we have pulled a lot of money through the discount model, then we are able to support as many children as we can. Because we believe in the next five or 10 years, our goal maybe in the 10 years is to ensure that we have 1 million learners supported. And we are using the availability, whatever is available, we would like to be sustainable to use the local resources but what is limiting us as of now is to get the initial capital to enhance the, the idea that we believe is going to be a game changer for our Uganda's education. Why so much, um, why I'm at Sina today is because of what they instilled in me. I would not, I wouldn't spend, I can't spend two months without coming to Sina, even, even if it, I'm coming to sleep because uh, it is my, it's my second home. When I'm coming to Kampala, I don't need to call them that I'm coming to Sina. I just come to Sina, they will come me, I sleep. This is my second home in the central. It makes me save some money, which, which, I, which I invest back at home to support children. Instead of spending money in hotels in Kampala, I came to Sina, they give me free accommodation, free, free, free food, per se, but I also use that time to support my availability at Sina gives me the room to talk with so many upcoming projects, share with their experiences. Since I'm uh, a coach by profession, they really need me most of the times, those ones who, who can't reach me on phone. When they see me here, they see somebody who is experienced in terms of coaching has come to offer support. So the two time I'm here, literally it is not for free. I am also offering consultancy on a free, it's a win-win situation. I'm offering free consultancy. They are giving me accommodation. They are giving me food. The days I stay here, I maximize to ensure that I give back to the community. Doing the school fees support, I'm paying back indirectly to somebody who supported me when I dropped out of university. That's why I'm working on a sustainable, on a sustainable project on a sustainable project to ensure that at least we support as many children as possible with less or stringent conditions. And using the networks here and there, we have gotten people who have supported us and we are happy trying to achieve the levels we think children, there is no children that needed to drop out of school because it's their right to be in school. That is my story. I'm happy to be on this call. And I want to thank Etienne for giving me this opportunity to share with what we are doing as an UNO fund with the world. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Albert. And yeah, I'm wondering if there are any comments, questions, no, Actually, I, go ahead. Oh, um, I have a question. How do you select the children that you support and how do you select the families that you support? What are your criteria for that? Our approach is extremely inclusive. We, as one of the pains that each parent in Uganda is having is school fees payment. We are open to anyone who is willing to use our strategies because we believe at any given time a person is spending money, at any given time somebody who is living in the village is growing crops, in this case the beans. So we are we our selection criteria is extremely 
inclusive. We do not look at only a person to join our project and we ask money. We ask what whatever they have. We ask if you have the beans, you can give us maybe two kilos of beans, you join our project. We don't ask you, give us uh, 10,000 to join our project. Say, give us the beans, you join our project. Mm -hmm. And we also say, uh, if you are a consistent customer to a certain business, which is giving us a discount, then you automatically become our, you, you automatically join our project and we start, we start supporting you. So it is a free entry, a free exit project, but you must understand why we are doing this. We are doing it this for ourselves. When we are working together, we all benefit. We are providing the avenue for a win-win situation for every stakeholder that is involved in our ecosystem. That's Thanks. great. That's like creative. That's like creative partnership. I kind of like it. You donate, you're in. That that really invests people. Very clever, actually, Albert. So, um, Albert, you mentioned in ten years one million um, scholars. That means you have to get a hundred thousand individuals, roughly, because I think you're at twelve hundred now every year. I love it. That's your moonshot. You want to get one million scholars in ten years. Is that it? But what we what we think that is going to be a game changer for us is technology. Okay. Because technology, we believe in technology that uh, if we get so many businesses, so business partners across the entire country then we can take advantage of people maybe who come to Uganda, they are high spenders, they can use this. Maybe they can give us a dollar or a cent. For us, we are looking at the investment opportunities. The idea behind is to say, people must own, people must believe they can, we can support 1 million learners in 10 years to come by raising the finances we need ourselves. Because we spend money on daily basis, they are uh, given the discount. Mm -hmm. If we if we are given a cent of a dollar on a daily basis from maybe a hundred thousand a hundred thousand businesses that are going to be we believe that are going to be on our portfolio, then we can raise money and support one million children. Huh. So, so we we look at the high spenders and we want to bring money to the low spenders. So people who are living in town, they are much more, they are of high side to contribute to our port for our financial pool. They may not need, somebody who is staying in town may not need our maybe 2,000 shillings, uh -huh. but he can, he can buy stuff and he can actually donate or even say, uh -uh, let me use the normal strategy to donate to somebody who lives in a remote area who is struggling to find the school fees for the child. So. In that way, people will be contributing uh -huh. in terms of not giving us cash directly, but spending their money. And for us, we get the discount the business is giving us. So it is not ideal to say you will give us cash, but you can buy your stuff and then we benefit on the discount. Right. And, so then become, and, then be part of the, and then Albert, then they become part of the project, right? I love it. Yeah. Oh, it's great. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, no, sure. I, I think that's clever. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that. You're welcome. Um, Albert, I'd like to know if you could talk about how you see this being replicated because in uh, if or if how, how you see it growing. Um because of your personality and because of your background and many other factors, you are a real driving force for this. And so that energizes your, you know, these 22 households and 1,200 children, that, that community that's supporting them. How do you see this replicating in other places? What what are you looking for to, to plant seeds with that? We thank you for that uh, question, which is having some technical part of it. We, in Uganda, every region is different. The crops they grow, their habits is different. So we are believing when we are going to scale to another location, we first do research to see what exact resources are available. What do they use themselves? How do they survive? How have, how have they been surviving before we came? What is the available resource? What are, what are the crops growing in that location? Then we wouldn't want to transfer 
if in a location they are growing rice, that's what we are going to work with in the locations where we go. So we are, we are, we are uh, building blocks to ensure that at least if this location they are growing beans, the other location is growing uh, rice. We want to marry that synergy. People who are growing beans, they are not growing rice, but they need rice. So we are able to transform strings from a region to another, strings from a region to another region. And that will give us the scalability effort or strength to move to different locations. Because every, every, every region, the pain is the same, wanting to send children to school. But how they do it is different with the av with availability of the resources. And in Uganda, more than 80%, more than 76, 75 to 80%, they are into subsistence economy. They are into subsistence economy. There is something that they are growing, but most of the things they, they do, they lack a market. They lack a market. So for us, we believe once we go to these areas and we are able to offer better prices, or we are able to aggregate what they are growing, and we are looking as at a bigger market, we are now holding enough, then we are able to negotiate better for better prices for people who are going to do business. We eliminate much of the time the middlemen who take advantage of these small household farmers. So we organize our communities in a such a way that we are one block. The idea is to raise a lot of money to support our children getting back at school. OK, thank you. Thank you. And with, uh, of course, with technology, it will be easy because every household we believe will have uh, will have a, a, an account on our, our system. So basically they can deposit what they have. If they have beans, they can deposit beans. If they have rice, they can deposit rice. Then the owners into our stores, then the owners is on us to look for market. In Uganda, or if we can also look at exporting, what we believe, it's the goal is to ensure we leverage what we have to make more money out of that.